Hey everybody, so I'm back looking at my survive the downturn watch list, looking for, for new traders to copy, people to put in the portfolio. And really, uh, a lot of people have been suggesting this guy, Hao Bin Lee Hamber. Now, I originally added him to the survive the downturn watch list just because of his stats. I haven't looked at him at all, I haven't analyzed him, but look, over one month, 6.88, over three months, 7.87, over six months, 41.81. So that's how he made it onto my list, but you know, a lot of you have sort of suggested, have a look at this guy, so I'm gonna kind of do that now. So Hao Bin Lee, He's read uh, so second level up on the Popular Investor Program. And what is he? He's not actually personally manually trading. If we go over here, I'm a senior lecturer and researcher in a university from Singapore. I received my Bachelor of Engineering, I think that is, and PhD degree in multi-objective optimization via stochastic simulation. What he's done is he's made a trading algorithm. He's programmed an algorithm to trade for him. And he's, he's trialing that out and seeing, can I make passive money? Can I put this bot to work and it can just make money for me, which would be awesome, wouldn't it? He says, I'm neither a professional fund manager nor a professional trader but I was the developer of two simulation-based optimization algorithms, MoCompass and GoPolar. GoPolars. On eToro, I'm experimenting my simulation-based optimization methodologies on finding the best trading strategies in the Forex market. So that's what he's doing. He's made this thing, he's trying it out on eToro in the Forex markets, seeing if it works. How amazing would that be? If you could just make a program, write it, and let it interact with the markets and it makes you money. I mean, that's an amazing goal. With the historical data I collected, simulation models I built, and search algorithms I wrote, I believe I'm able to make rational trading decisions for long-term gains. Sounds nice. I'm running my computer programs every weekend based on the latest data collected from the market before putting up the orders for the subsequent week and optimized trading decisions, including entering price, stop profit, and stop loss positions. There is zero manual intervention in the execution of my trading decisions. So once a week, gets the orders ready, decides what it wants to do, puts those orders in for the week, and he just leaves it. He's not intervening at all manually. Oh, maybe I should get rid of this. Maybe I should tr uh, change that. He's really, I think, from what he says, trying to let this... Uh, program, see if it actually works for him and set everything, you know, it, the, when you enter the trade, the stop profit, the stop loss, all of it. So how's he been doing? Let's quickly go over to his stats. Now, he, it shows him doing very well this year, 39.71. That's a huge res return for the year. The year before though, 1.16%. We've got 11 months of trading data last year and only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight from this year. So we've got a year and seven months in all, which isn't much trading data. Looking at last year, we've got some sort of biggish losses, 8.39 there, 9.79, he's made some of it back there. But we have him sort of eking out small gains, losses, and really he came out just on top. Now over 11 months, mm, he came out just on top. This year, we've got this huge result here, but really it's most of it's coming from March, 25.32 here in March, a huge March, bumper month. Now I would rather, obviously, most of this, year, uh, this year's gains have come from that month because we have loss here, we have loss, 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 loss. You know, Without that, where would he be? Not looking in such good shape actually for the year. Still profitable, I think, but not in such good shape. I would obviously rather see something which is more reliable, something which looks like it's repeatable. Smaller gains, smaller losses, but mostly gains leading to a nice win. That's what I'd rather see, is sort of a general slow, steady green leading to a nice number. When I see 25.32 for March, coupled with the fact that he only just um, beat zero last year. I, I don't know. I mean, amazing that this algorithm can do it, right? I don't mean to take that away. I couldn't do it at all. But still, as statistics, eh, I'm worried about that being, uh, you know, I don't really trust this number because it's mostly coming from one month. Some people have asked in his feed, you know, comments by copiers saying there's a reverse trend on certain Forex pair compared to what I'm doing. So people are writing in that the trend's going this way. Why aren't you buying? And he's selling, you know, and they're asking why. My strategy is to ignore the quote market trend for a single Forex pair, but purely look at historical experience of using the market for information. Independently choose whichever policy that led to a larger profit in the past. Anyway, as I mentioned, I am not a professional investor, but a lecturer teaching system engineering and a researcher working on stochastic and simulation, simulation optimization. I'm experimenting if what I study could be applied to the Forex trading and mitigating the risk is my main focus in the current strategy. So he's really saying to people, I am trying out my model. I'm tweaking it and trying out and optimizing my model. He's trying to warn people, you know, I am, I'm an engineer here. I'm, I'm trying something out. So over here, his max drawdown, 14.79% yearly. Here is average risk four, max five. It goes up to six, but really his, his scores seem pretty consistent. Copiers, he's gaining loads. Look at this, he's really 
going up. People are liking what they're seeing. I think they're seeing that big number and they're attracted by it. People want to make gains, right? What do you think at the moment? Me, I'm not so into the big number because it's coming from one month. And I've copied people where they had one big month and it was leading to overall big gains before. But I really need to see the consistency. I think I'm leaning more towards, wow, this guy's made a thing which seems to be working in the market. He is an engineer. He's skilled at this. And I think over time, he may refine this and it may really work. He did make 25.32 in March. You know, it's a, still a huge gain. But I think I'm leaning towards, all right, I'll watch him and see how his model goes over time. Uh, now, maybe it's, it's better at certain market conditions than others. So if I copy him in six months, maybe the algorithm works now, but in six months it won't. But then the market is so choppy at the moment. It's going from bear market to bull market to what's happening, I don't know. Market uh, conditions are changeable. So I'd have to see how does this react to changeable market conditions. I'd, I'd want to watch him. I think for now I'd want to watch him, admire that he's doing this, and, and just see how's his trading bot going over the months, all right? This is like purely a technical thing. I'd want more data, see how he's doing. But he's getting lots of copiers. His risk scores are good. He said he wants to mitigate risk, doesn't he, in that thing in his post. And it looks like he's doing that. He's not too risky. It's not like max yearly drawdown of 40% or something, which I've seen, you know, and this isn't constantly hitting six and seven, which I've seen. So 279 trades. Um, now, this is strange, okay? And it, it sort of speaks to, I think, the fact that he's using a bot because uh, it's quite strange. 58% profitable. So he's, as he said, he's, he's winning slightly more than he's losing. Average profit, 34%. Average loss, 36%. The huge um, proportions. And here on Euro GBP, 74.29% profitable. Average profit is 22%. Average loss, 39 And we keep seeing this. Look at the average profit is 40%. Average loss, 32 He's really letting them run, or his algorithm is really trading in a way I'm not used to humans trading. It's going for huge profits, and it's accepting huge losses. So it's probably setting the, the stop losses around 40% on each, because look, I don't know. It's an algorithm, all right? It doesn't look like a human trading. Not to me. I don't normally see that. Um, 4.98 trades per week, two weeks average holding time, active since since then. Yeah, I don't think I'd copy open trades with him. I think I'd, I, I, it's up to you. I mean, I'd have to look into it more. At the moment, I don't think I'm going to copy him. I'm going to go to his chart. Over here, 10,000. If you'd copied him with 10,000 last year, you'd now have 14,516, which is a lot. What is that, like a 45% profit? That's unbelievable. He's done really, really well. Obviously, we're seeing drawdowns, but we saw the biggest max drawdown was 15%. So it's, you know, that's the normal market cycles. And then look, it really from February to uh, mid-April, he was doing magnificently. And then we see that drop in April, as we saw with so many of the other traders. So his bot is sort of, there's a correlation with other traders. So let's compare him to some people. Let's compare him to the SPX 500, the S&P 500. Uh, so S&P 500 is in green here. And we can see S&P 500 just drawing down and uh, Hambear with his algorithm really outperforming that. Let's compare him to Jay Rott. Uh, there we are, Javier, who's also in my portfolio. So Javier, uh, is oh, it's made in blue as well. So Jay Rotland actually, Javier is actually beating the algorithm and really nice steps up. You see the steps up on Javier's, boom, boom, boom. Very sort of more consistent. It's less of this, the algorithm is showing a huge, so the algorithm stays consistent here, and then it shows this huge gain, that sort of 25% kind of gain, and then it's sort of consistent again, whereas Javier is kind of stepping up, stepping up, stepping up, stepping up, you know, which is actually what I'm more comfortable with seeing for the moment. But they're both of them being the S&P 500. Let's look at analysis. He's also, analysis cyclico is a human trader trading Forex, also in my survive the downturn watch list. He's outperforming the S&P 500, there we are, but he's below um, uh, Javier and he's below the algorithm. What do you think? Would you copy this guy? A lot of trades open, really trading gold as well, not just currencies, he's also trading gold. If we look at his stats, he is 86% currencies and 13% commodities. So a little bit of commodities trading. At the moment, I think I would wait and watch for more data and just watch you know, really keenly to see how well he does. Um, what an idea. There he is, Haubin Lee, there with his name tag, looking like a PhD and an engineer. I hope he continues to do well. I'll keep my eye on it. When I, when I first found eToro, what I was doing is I was watching lots of documentaries about people who were using algorithms to trade on the high-frequency markets. And I thought, that's amazing 
that people can program it and with that skill and then sort of tie their program into the markets and let it trade for them and just sort of make money. I thought that's amazing. That's how I found eToro because it was kind of the next best thing to let other people use their skill and trade for you. But we'll see. I'll watch, I'll watch Haobin Lee. I'll keep my eye on him, keep him on a watch list. At the moment, I won't copy him, but that's not financial advice. He might be amazing. What do I know? I'm an amateur. Um, so anyhow, thanks for the suggestion. I'd already got him on there. Uh, what would you do? Please write in the comments. To let me know what I've missed about him, if I've missed something um, that is really, really interesting or frightening or whatever. Anyhow, we'll get on to the next one in the next uh, video. Hope you're doing well and I hope you're, you're, you know, you're picking good people or trading well yourself. See you.